Okay, so now we want, I want to talk about uh, neonatal uh, conjunctivities. And my resource, uh, as you see, is Merck. And you can find this on Google. And this is free. Um, let's start. So we will start with a brief um, intro, um, which conjunctivities is maybe watery or purulent, a discharge from the eye, and maybe we need to look at this, a conjunctivitis, Oops. okay, we need to see some pictures, you can see that the eye is usually injected, and there sometimes purulent discharge from the eye, um, yeah, there is a very nice uh, picture, this picture, maybe I can make it bigger, or this one. You can see that the bacterial conjunctivitis usually comes with a pull and discharge. Anyway, in any case, which is not normal, in any conjunctivitis, the eye is injected. Uh, there is redness, and the bacterial conjunctivitis has pull and discharge, whereas the viva viral um, and the allergic um, have more watery discharge. Um, also, you can see that the viral conjunctivitis um, is very uh, contagious, and therefore, when someone has viral conjunctivitis, we can think, we can expect that both of the eyes will be affected. Now, when you look at the allergic conjunctivitis, um, it may be very similar to viral conjunctivitis, yet usually it is accompanied accom accompanied by uh, another congestion, uh, sneezing, um, swelling of the eye, um, and both of the eyes will be affected. And this is not contagious because it's allergic. Um, so viral and allergic may be um, quite similar. And bacterial uh, purulent is one of the things that may, be, may help us differentiate it. Okay, but we will talk about neonatal conjunctivities, namely we will talk about neonates. Um, so here we started to talk about the differences between the types of neonatal con natal conjunctivities. And uh, we, s we presented that there is bacterial conjunctivities there is viral conjunctivitis, and there is a chemi chemical, we'll talk about it, and allergic. Okay, so uh, if we talk about the diagnosis, we can take a swab from the discharge if there is, and the treatment is depend on the cause. Uh, bacterial, uh, we will use antibiotics, viral, there is nothing too much to do uh, when we talk about drugs. Um, allergic and uh, chemical. Um, viral, if this is herpes, like herpes kerato uh, conjunctivitis, we may need to use aciclovir. We will we'll talk about this. Okay. So, when we talk about neonates, um, the most common causes is the bacterial, after this comes the chemical, and after this cause comes the viral. Now, in neonates, we must think about um, their state, their afterbirth, namely, um, they were exposed to the um, birth canal. In the birth canal, we may, we may find chlamydia, which you must be aware of that chlamydia infection may be asymptomatic so the mother may not be uh, aware that she is uh, affected by chlamydia. We also um, may see there a uh, gonorrhea. Let's see our gonorrhea. And da, da, da. Okay. Sorry if I don't write it uh, uh, correctly. Gonorrhea from like, those can be seen in the birth canal. Therefore, uh, most of the times, uh, 
at least where I am, the mother are being checked. A gonna gonna cook out here it is. Which is and it's area gonorrhea gonococcal and go no okay so i started to say that the mother usually being tested for chlamydia and gonorrhea before birth not just this uh, but also the baby um is given treatment at birth against a uh, gonorrhea and we'll talk about this yes those are not the only one the only bacteria that can cause it um, so you see that also other bacteria like strep pneumonia um, which also non typable hemophilus um, and gonococcus we already said now, when we talk about chlamydia, chlamydia that causes conjunctivitis, which is called chlamydia ophthalmia, uh, we usually talk about chlamydia trachomatis, this type of chlamydia. Uh, what else do we have to say? Okay, that's on the bacterial conjunctivitis, if we hear uh, bacteria. Now, when we talk about chemical conjunctivitis, this is usually secondary uh, to the topical treatment um, that the neonates uh, is given at birth uh, for prophylaxis against a gonococcal infection. Okay, this is the chemical, it's a secondary reaction to what we do. Now, when we talk about viral, we usually talk about herpes 1 and 2, what is called herpetic keratoconjunctivitis, but it's quite rare. And let's see the symptoms. You can see here the uh, gonococcal infection with the pool and discharge. Okay. Now you see that Merck starts with a not notation that there is an overlap in manifestation therefore it's quite difficult to distinguish clinically between the bacterial viral and chemical chemical we saw by pictures the differences uh, but if you if we say generally we are talking about an injected eye namely a very red eye where the vessels are dilated and therefore the eye becomes red and discharge those are the hallmark of conjunctivitis when the discharge may be watery like in viral or purulent which is which is more uh, in the bacterial side now in order to differentiate better between the types we have time the time may tell us which type of conjunctivitis we are more likely to encounter. Now, when we're talking about chemical conjunctivitis, if you remember, we said that it is a secondary to the prophylaxis we give at birth to the uh, newborn against uh, gonorrhea. So, it usually appears six to eight hours after we, um, after we put the prophylaxis and disappear um, 48 to 96 hours and um, so a baby born with in with age of I don't know a week you won't be expected a chemical conjunctivitis chlamydia ophthalmo uh, ophthalmia chlamydia it usually occurs 5 to 14 days after the the mother gave birth. Now it can be very mild, but it can goes from mild to very severe with eyelid edema. Um, so be aware of chlamydia and uh, it may be severe. Gonococcal, 
the one we are treating against this causes poor land conjunctivities poor land it's usually two to five days after birth uh, and if we have premature rupture of membranes it may be seen earlier uh, we also may see edema um, oh, and hemosis let's look at uh, you can see maybe I will find a very good The red part. No, never mind about this. Let's continue. Okay. Now, gonococcal is one that we want to avoid. the The reason is because you see that if gonococcal infection, gonococcal ophthalmia is untreated, is left untreated, um, the cornea may go may uh, may be ulcerated and it can cause blindness to the child okay other bacteria they are ranging in the onsen, onsen others bacteria it may be from four days to several weeks and herpetic con uh, keratoconjunctivitis um, remember that herpes can go to the central nervous system therefore be aware of this um, now they say that the presence of dendritic keratitis is pathognomonic let's see if I will find an image of this Dent okay you see that blue light and you see that the dendritic keratitis, you see those uh, green uh, flashes in this blue light that is pathognomonic to herpes keratoconjunctivitis. Herpes keratitis, you see. Okay. Let's proceed. Diagnosis is based on a you can do, take a sample from the uh, discharge uh, and run a PCR or something for uh, chlamydia, gonorrhea, herpes, and things like this. So you see that also, just a sec, we can use a viral counter if there is a suspicious for a viral infection. Okay, the treatment. The treatment is depends. Um, if we know that a mother has gonococcal infection or gram-negative intracellular diplococcus, which is quite similar to gonococcus, yes, gonococcus is diplococcus gram-negative, therefore, they will be treated with ceftriaxone or cefotaxime. Remember that ceftriaxone in neonates may be a little bit of a problem if there is hyperbilirubinemia or the, the neonate takes uh, calcium uh, calcium based uh, there is a we'll get to this but be aware of ceftriaxone uh, or cefotaxin now in chlamydia uh, we need to, to treat it in a systemic way um, and you see the antibiotics erythromycin, azithromycin um, for the treatment. Be aware that uses, using erythromycin is associated with the increased incidence of hypertrophic pyloric stenosis in neonates. Therefore, if you give erythromycin, 
monitor for symptoms yes the projectile vomiting uh, that is so um, now if we have gonococcal ophthalmia we need to hospitalize the patient um, because there may be a systemic gonococcal infection we will get a ceftriaxone here you see the warning for infants that have hyperbilirubinemia or um, receiving calcium containing fluids that is the thing that I forgot um, they should not be given ceftriaxone and as a replace they are given cefotaxime 100 milligram for a kilo IV or IM um, now you can use a saline irrigation um, to take off all those secretions from the eye to prevent the herring of the eyes which is not very nice you saw in this picture how the eyes are stay shut because all the all the pus is adhering there so we need to clean those eyes mm, it would be better now if we are suspecting other bacteria um, we can give topical ointments with polymyxin with bacitracin, erythromycin or tetracycline if we think about herpetic keratoconjunctivitis, you saw the keratitis there, the pathognomonic way to diagnose diagnosis of herpetic conjunctivitis. This should be treatment, t treatment, treated with ophthalmologist uh, consolation. You see the treatment is with a ciclovir, um, 3 mg for a kilo, systemically, and topical uh, ophthalmic drops. And be aware that corticosteroid containing ointments uh, may, may make the infection of the eye worse if the neonate is infected with chlamydia trachomatis and herp simplex, and therefore uh, don't give a corticosteroid uh, based ointment to a neonate with a conjunctivity. Now we can prevent, and we are preventing. Uh, the gonococcal ophthalmia you see the use of silver nitrate drops erythromycin and tetracycline given for to the newborn to prevent gonococcal ophthalmia um, but be aware that as it effective against gonococcal ophthalmia in preventing gonococcal of ophthalmia it's not working against chlamydia ophthalmia um that's it and you see here again that mothers that has untreated gonorrhea uh, should should receive a single injection of ceftriaxone you see the 25 to 50 milligram for kilo and again, the warning against using ceftriaxone in neonates with hyperbilirubinemia or those receiving calcium-containing fluids. And screen for chlamydia, HIV, and syphilis in those children. Now you see the key points. Bacterial conjunctivitis, which we said is the first, uh, the most prevalent cause of, of conjunctivitis in neonates is caused mainly by chlamydia trachomatis, streptococcus pneumonia, non-type of lemophilus influenza, and gonorrhea is quite rare, and we give prophylaxis for this. Now, how do you recognize conjunctivitis? Conjunctivates are injected and discharged. Uh, it can be watery or pollen. We can test the material uh, of the discharge antibiotics if you are suspecting a bacterial infection as we see as we saw um, and if we have chlamydia ophthalmia we need to give a systemic treatment we also talked about the chemical as chemical aspect uh, 
which is usually a secondary result of our prophylaxis against gonorrhea that we give the children at birth. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, credit for the Merck. If I had any mistakes or something like this, please tell me. Please let me know. Thank you also. And that was about neonatal conjunctivitis.